Hi, my name is Keith Cooper and in this short video I'm going to try and answer a question I get asked quite often and that is uh, do I need a new printer? Uh, people quite often have had a printer for a while and they see a new printer come out they may see some example prints I've done on it or read the article the review that I've written or any of the, the stuff like that and think hmm that looks nice my old printer's getting on a bit would that make better prints? Well I'm gonna have to say that if you have a perfectly good printer then and it works and you get good prints out of it um, then why bother? Um, of course I can say that because I, I don't sell printers or inks or paper um, I'm an architectural photographer and um, I happen to test these things and look at them out of interest as much as anything and also to get a chance to do print some of my images which I might not otherwise get. So if we've got a good printer why bother? Well if it's a few years old you may find that the inks are harder to get but it needs to be quite a few years old for that. Printers are supported for quite a while. Um, why get one? Well what about if it's got some annoying factors that you don't like? Now this is a Canon Pro 200. It's uh, the successor to the Canon Pro 100. Now I reviewed the Canon Pro 100 back in 2011 print quality was fine. In fact, because of the inks, the print head and various things, I wouldn't expect print quality itself to be massively greater in the 200 than it was in the 100. Now, there will be some differences, but probably not that much. And always remember that if I've looked at a recent printer and got very good results from it, then a new printer needs to be phenomenally better to be a clear advantage over an old one. Um, printers are already pretty good, so a new one has a tough job in being even better than pretty good. Um, and this is something that's often lost because what, a lot of what you read about printers is marketing, and marketing is aimed at selling you a new printer. Now, I mentioned, you know, if it's working, if it's broken, your printer, then yep, think about a new printer, no reason not to. However, what about various annoyance factors of older printers. Um, for example, Epson's. Um, I never found it a particular problem, but it was annoyance in having to swap black inks when I change paper type from photo paper to matte paper. I might want to change quite often, but I was always going to lose a bit of ink. And with smaller printers, the amount of ink you lost was enough that it made a difference. Might not stop you from doing a print, but it would make you less likely to just think, oh, I'll try that on matte paper or try that on photo or brighter paper or, or something different. So there are lots of different ways you, you might choose to do, how it might affect your printing. And uh, the black ink swap was long a complaint. Well, anyway, that's gone now. So the P700, P900, you no longer have the black ink swap. So that's great. What about Canon? Well, I mentioned I tried the Pro 100 years ago. Uh, print quality, great. Its major problem to me was its margin handling on art papers like this. That's uh, if you're somewhere in southern Colorado, I believe, if I remember rightly. Yes, that's the Great Sand Dunes National Park in the distance there. But it, that's printed on an art paper because I like the way the colours come out on this particular paper. Now, if I'd wanted to print this on the old Pro 100, I would not have been able to get margins this small. And I certainly wouldn't have been able to print borderless on paper like that. Now, I don't necessarily want to print borderless, but it's an annoyance and something you have to work around. So it's a resistance to printing, much like the black ink swap. Well, anyway, 200 gets rid of that. Paper handling on this is excellent. Um, see the reviews I've written and stuff about how to use it. This and the 300 as well. 300 had the uh, limitations as well. Uh, these printers, for example, now will print panoramic prints up to just shy of a metre long. That's 13 inch, 39 inch. It's quite a yeah, big size print. That's also an improvement over the old ones. So there are features that are definite improvements. And if the old features caused you problems, that's a reason to get a new printer.
Uh, this printer, for example, has a screen on it. Um, now, the old Pro 100 and 200 had just a couple of buttons on the front and that was it. You didn't know what was going on in the printer. I much prefer this and I find it easier to help people new to printing find out what they're doing and appreciate what's going on because a lot of the difficulties people face when they get into printing is about confidence. And having a screen like this or even the touch screen that's really good on the uh, P700 and P900 for the Epsons is a good step forward. It's not something necessarily to make you jump out and go and get a new printer, but it's one of those things that after a while you will appreciate it and um, think, hmm, how did I get by with this before? I should say that the old P800, P600 did have screens. They were nowhere near the quality of the screens on the 700, 900. It's just part of that evolution you get. But that's how, um, how I would say the features change and how they might make a difference to what you're doing. Now, remember too, that if you're thinking of getting a new printer, by all means, have a look at the manufacturer's specifications. And I always put the specifications into any reviews I write, but take them with a pinch of salt because printer specifications are written as marketing documents. Uh, they are specifications indeed, but they're also to help market the printer. And what I would say as a general rule, any highest quality print settings that you see from a printer, whether it's this Canon, whether it's Nepson, whether it's anything, any highest quality settings you see are there for marketing purposes and gain you no real benefit whatsoever. Now, I'm sure I could come up with some test images and if I looked at them with a magnifying glass, I might be able to see a difference. But in the real world, there is no difference, apart from the prints generally takes longer to print. Um, so uh, that, that I would say is just be wary of the specifications. Um, so have a look at the reviews I've got. Now, people often say, which is best? this or that two printers. Now I've done a comparison between this and the 300 um, and also the Epson P700, P900 because they're very similar in some ways and there are clear reasons for looking between them. But if you write to me and say, which should I get, Canon or Epson? My answer is going to be, it depends. And it depends entirely on how much you want to spend, what kind of printing you're going to do, how much printing you're going to do, all kinds of other things. So basically, don't ever expect me to answer the question, which is best? Now, I've actually got an article as to why that's been one of my working principles for reviews for 15 years, or my written reviews before I did the videos. But, you know, if you're if you want me to say which is best, give me a list of specifications of what's important to you, and I'll tell you which ones may matter, but I won't recommend printers. Remember, I don't sell printers. I have no interest whether you buy a printer or whether you don't buy a printer or whether you get your prints printed elsewhere. It's about getting the results from it. Um, but the other thing is, when you get a new printer, a new printer, particularly if there's any significant change between the old one you had, you should re-evaluate re your paper choices. Um, new printer, new papers. Don't assume that your best papers for the old printer will automatically give best results on the new one. It's worth trying, obviously, particularly if you've got boxes of the paper, but be prepared to find that a particular paper doesn't work as well on one printer as it does another. Certainly, if you'd been printing on this Pro 200 with dye-based printer, and you found that you really liked the depth of colour that you could get from some uh, art papers, and then you printed on a pigment ink printer on a similar paper, you might be disappointed. Equally well, if you like glossy prints on this, you may be disappointed with pigment inks. However, if you like nice, heavy, brighter style papers, luster, papers that look like old photo papers, particularly for black and white, and you've been printing on one of these, then switch over to a pigment ink printer, you may find your results are much better and noticeably better as well. What I would say is that, um, I only get printers for a limited period of time, so I can't give long-term usage advice. Um, keep an eye on, if, you, if a printer's been out for a while, keep an eye on uh, various forums like DP Review, the printing forum there and that, but do be wary of so-called forum wisdom. Um, 
Watch what's said, but give it a skeptical eye because an awful lot of stuff that's said about printers and how to use them isn't even wrong. Um, it's just, yeah, just people have an idea and they promulgate that idea. So take it with care, but you know, do keep an eye on it because it is where potential faults occur. And with any new printer, there can be down the line various changes and faults. And I would say if you get a new printer, always update the firmware if you see firmware result, uh, firmware updates appearing because there are all kinds of changes they often don't say what the uh, changes cover but they will be there to address issues and bugs improvements and things in the printer so it is definitely worth having a look but above all don't think getting a new printer is suddenly going to revitalize the quality of your prints. If you make rubbish photos and can't edit them properly, it doesn't matter how good the printer is, you'll get rubbish prints. So, no matter what you do with printing, go out, take more photos, look at that side of your photography as well. By all means, spend time perfecting your printing, but remember, to get a good print, you need a good photo. So, anyway, hope that's uh, of some interest. Um, I say, leave a, a comment or a question if you've got some, or contact me at Northlight if you've got any specific questions. And um, thank you.